On today's Poncho Section podcast, we explore dry cleaning. What is it? Where do the clothes go? You'll find it all out today. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the Poncho Section, our tentatively named podcast. I'm Michael Camphor with co-host Ethan Feldstein, and we're here to talk about everything media, music, movies, TV, internet shows, and much more. So why don't we uh, dive into it? Let's jump headfirst into the mess. Ethan. The Joe Cocker version, though, might be my preferred version of the song. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mine, too. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I find it interesting when you have a band or an act do a cover version and it's actually something you'd want to listen to more than the original that's what i that's what always i look for in a great cover yeah i actually as a kid i because i watched the wonder years as a kid i only knew joe cocker's version of the song yeah. so i actually didn't i i actually had the beatles version i listened to later yeah. later on once i got into the beatles i had the same thing i always remembered the joe cocker version and then i think even at like bar mitzvahs mm-hmm they would always play that song either for one of the candles or at the end. Yeah, with the, the Friends. Yeah, the Friends, friends thing. Candle. They would play the, the Beatles version always. And I always thought, like, oh, man, that's what, who does this? Is, yeah. Who does the, this cover of, jo, of the Joe Cocker song from the Wonder Years? And see, for me, it was always the Friends theme song. was always the song that people were... Uh, oh, no, that was, the, that was always the Friends candle. Yeah. But I was talking about more, uh, you know, towards the end. I feel like all bar mitzvahs either ended with that Beatles version or, that's, or what friends are for. that's what friends are for or the Donna Summer's last last, last dance yeah, last or last dance dan- last yeah. chance um yeah yeah so the yeah it's it was something that I, I discovered later too so um, and, and it's a great song but I actually always like the Joe Cocker version better and the best is obviously the performance at Woodstock oh yeah which if you haven't seen the Woodstock documentary, it's highly worth it. You should definitely watch that. And then there's also a Miss Her lyrics of that. Really? Because he's, I mean, he's drunk and high on who knows what up there. So he kind of mumbles a little bit. So somebody took, made a, like, Miss Her lyrics. Mm-hmm. And it's the funniest thing. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. And you kind of, when, when you have it, the lyrics written out, you can hear it in your head. Like, oh, he is saying that. And that's on YouTube? Oh, it's definitely on YouTube. Okay, yeah, so you I'll, can I'll easily find check that. that out. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I mean, that that's a great cover. Um, I don't know anything else you want to add to that. No, uh, I mean, just if we're talking about Joe Cocker, he was just known for taking a cover song and making it his own. Mm-hmm. There's that one. He actually does uh, Came Through the Bathroom Window, which mm-hmm. is also a Beatles tune. Okay. did he, he also did, and I, well, I thought it was his own, but I don't think it was. Um, that song "You Are So Beautiful." Yeah, I don't know who originally does it, but I because part I, of me thinks it was written for him to sing. Because it was written by, weirdly enough, it was written by Dennis Wilson. From oh H-Bus. really? It's like the one thing he did. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, Dennis Wilson wrote that song. Interesting. I know that that was uh, Joe Cocker's mom's favorite song. Mm-hmm. I just know that because I had the. Um, the radio show in college and mm-hmm. Joe Cocker was one of the like the, the themes that night so mm-hmm. talked about it yeah oh, Joe Cocker was great um, but yeah that I mean that's a very pretty song so. yeah uh, so what are I guess overall what are your feelings on covers in general love them hate them what's up um, well originally I was never a big fan when I was younger because I didn't I didn't understand because every time I would I guess I didn't really have a basic understanding. I was listening to my parents a lot who would, they would hear songs on the radio. Mm-hmm. I'd be listening to uh, Z100, the oh yeah, the New York network. And the, um, the song would come out, our song would get popular, and they would say, oh, this is taken from this, or this is... Uh, I remember hearing, uh, there was a song, I think it was by Shaggy. Oh, God. <laughs> or it was... Oh, I, um, Angel, right? Right, yeah, and I heard that, and it was like a big song at the time, in, in like the late 90s. And, totally, and I think my mom heard she's like, "Oh my god, this is, this is a totally different song. Like, this was a song from the '60s." So what are you talking about? And then I heard uh, "Morning Angel," right? Is that what um it? no no the space oh, oh my god, uh, some people call me the space cowboy. Um, no wait, we're thinking of a different song. I think. Oh wait, I'm, no. You, oh wait, no. That I think because I think he did maybe a few. I'm thinking of. Um, Morning Angel. People are going to get so mad at me for this. But there's, <laughs> it, it was actually, 
the the song was in it's in, um, it's in it was in the movie Deadpool actually not to give anything away but why uh, can't I now I can't think of the guy uh, uh, jo- no, Steve Miller Steve Miller band right that was a different one see I'm looking I'm okay so Angel of the Morning was the song and it was by Juice Newton Juice Newton I, I think you're just making things up. No, there. no, no. This is a real thing. <laughs> um, wait, I'm looking. I'm looking on Wikipedia. It was recorded in 1967. Um, yeah, it was by. Wait. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think it was. Yeah, single by Juice Newton from the album Juice. I swear. <laughs> I'll have to look. I'll have to look it up later. I'm. I'm almost positive the song you were talking about was by Steve Miller. No, but sh- I think sh- that was Shaggy's thing. Is he would he would Shaggy it up with his. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, so this came out. Turn it into a verb. Yeah, to shaggy something up. <laughs> to shaggy. Uh, okay, so it was recorded. Came out in two thousand one. Recorded in two thousand. It was. It was just called Angel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was called Angel. It came out right after the song. It wasn't me, which is a great song. Actually. Yeah. Oh God. That's, that's... a classic. Uh, so, yeah, that. But but that's an example of when I was younger. You know, I would hear a song, and I was pretty much indifferent. I would hear things, and I'd be like, oh, I recognize it. Mm-hmm. Maybe I like it. I don't know. But my parents were always saying, oh, this is so terrible. The original is so much better. So I was kind of like, yeah, you know, the originals <laughs> are better. So I kind of got into that whole thing. But I realized later on that there are some covers or some reimaginings that actually work out. I thought um, Lauren Hill did um, Killing Me Softly oh, yeah, yeah. later on, which... Again, my parents hate it, but when I look back at it now, it kind of had its own thing. I don't think it's bad, necessarily. Yeah, no, it's definitely a unique take to this song. Yeah, I think... I think and can. she's got a great voice, so... She's got a great voice, and I think you can bring your own thing to it. I think a lot of times it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a risky thing to do a cover, especially of a, a song that's uh, really popular. But one thing I wanted to um, bring up, I wanted to talk about the song Superstar, but before I do that, I want to know your feelings on covers. Oh, yeah. Um... I definitely have a love-hate relationship with it. There's sometimes I hear a cover and I'm like, what are you doing? Why did you do this? You've ruined this song. And then other times I now go back to that cover as as opposed to going to the original. Because it's just, I don't know, it, it, t- it takes me to another place that the original maybe did not. Or I'm not saying that the original was necessarily bad, but it's just taking me to a, a different kind of feeling or a different vibe. I know that. So I created... A, a cover kind of type. Yeah. And I would say my favorite is my second type. So the the first type I had, it, I've written down as a, a true cover, which would be something that's like almost word for word, instrument for instrument, the, kind of the same thing, which I think can work sometimes. Other times I f- kind of find boring. Mm-hmm. Um, I find it can work if it's some sort of tribute to um, like an act. That I think works well. Uh, the one that's my favorite is a making it your own yeah. kind of cover, which is I think is what we were talking about with like Lauren Hill. She kind of made that song yeah. her own, or just any kind of reimagining where it's not just basically singing the song. Yeah, like You're you change. Your own spin yeah, to it. you can change the the style of the song. Maybe you, you change the genre. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can change up the instrumentation, and it, you make a person think about that song in a different way than you what originally right um and then the third type would be i guess what i'm calling samples yeah which and then breaks up into another pseudo set so there's like true samples which i'm calling it which is just i'm taking this wave form i'm taking this part from the song and i'm just copy and paste it into my song maybe i'll tweak with the the sounds a little bit but it's basically the same thing Mm -hmm. and then there's like a pseudo sampling which i would say it would be something like the Who, where they did, um, uh, oh my God, real good looking boy. Okay. So that they were that was kind of a tribute, if you will, to uh, Elvis. Right. So like the the whole story, the song is where I think I guess Roger Daltrey is is singing in front of his mirror, mm-hmm. pretending to be this amazing rock star. Yeah. And his mother's like, yeah, he's a good looking boy, but you're ugly. You can't uh, do it. But they play. Um, they take a part from, what was it, can't, Young People Fall In? Oh my god, I'm butchering this. Fools, fool, fools Rush In, that, well, okay. that oh, song. Oh yeah, okay. So they take they take a, song, a, a snippet from that and they kind of tweak it a little bit, but that's like with their own instruments and stuff like that. 
Um, and then the, the last part I would say would be under the sampling category would be mashups, where they take two yeah. originals and they smash them together to come up with something brand new. Overall, my favorite, though, would be the second one, which is just taking a song and making it your own. For sure. I mean, the sampling has, has been done a lot, especially lately. Yeah. There's a lot of sampling. Um, one that I liked always was uh, the, the Funkadelic song, and I can't remember the name, of course, but De La Soul sampled it. Oh, really? For uh, Me, Myself, and I. Uh, and that was like that was a number one hit for them. Oh, wow. So I think it, it, it works in a lot of cases. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's a little weird, especially um, when, when Eminem, you know, when Eminem does it. Uh, like Dido? <laughs> but see, yeah, I guess yeah, that was a sample. Yeah. But that was a weird sample. And that was such an angry, sad song. I would say one of the weirdest samples I, I've ever heard was, um, oh my, I think Little Wayne, not Little Wayne, Little John was involved, and I think the guy's name was Tricky, mm -hmm. and they covered, oh my god, it was an Ozzy tune. Um, I don't know. Crazy Train? Yes. They covered Crazy Train, and that was one of the most bizarre things I've ever heard. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know that. They, but, yeah. <laughs> but there, there's a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, it doesn't always work. But I agree. I think the best is songs that they really that people can really make their own. Totally. So yeah, I wanted to talk about the song "Superstar" by the Carpenters. Yeah. Which we were just listening to before. Which is it's a really great song. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, and um, one of the the most famous covers is the Sonic Youth cover, and um, mm -hmm. in the Sonic Youth cover, I think. Um, whether or not you like it, I think you have to admit that they really did make the song their own, and they they made it into this darker kind of weird avant-garde sort of thing. Yeah, it definitely had a, a much darker kind of tone to the song, as opposed to I think it went f away from being more of a love song. Yeah. To kind of just like I don't know this darker like uh, of hurt. Yeah, you, yeah, it's like a more painful yeah, kind yeah. of song, and I think that. And, and I, I happen to like it. I happen to like both versions. Mm -hmm. But I happen to like that one uh, because because it does bring a different sort of emotion. And I think that's really cool that they're able to do that with the same song. Yeah. That you're able to completely transform it. And that in, in itself is like a totally amazing talent to be able to do that, yeah. to rearrange something like that. I think it's really cool. Yeah. I, d I definitely like when uh, things come together like that. On the other side of that spectrum, uh, we briefly mentioned it uh, before that we started this, but it, I love the band In Excess. Yeah. And one of their best albums is this album called Kick. Mm -hmm. And then Beck came along uh, with a, a group of musicians. I think maybe even St. Vincent is mm -hmm. in. It was in that crowd. And they did a, an entire album cover. And to be honest, I did not like it. Yeah. I did like, I understood, I appreciated it for their, the creative aspects of sure. what they were doing. Cause they, it's a lot to tackle. They were pay, they were definitely paid homage to, uh, the album. I mean, they, you wouldn't spend all that time if you didn't like the band or you didn't like the album originally. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I just, I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't get it, get into it. It, it just did not. It did not work for me. They made it their own, but in that case, it did not just. It didn't work. Yeah, and sometimes that happens. I've heard plenty of uh, bad covers. I heard the band Panic at the Disco oh, do a cover of Radiohead's Karma Police. And, really? And I, I had to shut it off. It was so terrible, <laughs> just because it wasn't fitting for me. Yeah, it wasn't, his voice wasn't fitting. And it just that's a, and again, that's a tough song to cover. Yeah, I, how did they do it? Did they make it like more? Because Panic at the Disco is like that weird emo pop. Yeah. How did they make like? Did, did they keep the style of the song? Or, they uh, did. He yeah. He was on the piano and he was doing it, but it was just his voice, which I don't like. And yeah. I think that that automatically is fair gonna, enough is going to cause a problem. But that was the same thing I was saying about uh, Gerard Way from uh, My Chemical Romance yeah, doing yeah. the cover of Superstar, which which he did fairly recently, but it was. It was just him singing over a track mm -hmm. because it was the same music. Yeah. And it was just his voice. And his voice just, to me, is not as good as Karen Carpenter's. I mean, oh, of course. It's, it's different. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a different take I on the song. I just prefer her voice much better. Oh, of course. I prefer her voice to his. Um, and and the other one, we stumbled on the video of Ruben Studdard from... Oh, my God. From, uh, must, be, must have been over 10 years ago on American Idol. And I gotta say, that guy crushes it. He, yeah. he sang 
he was great. It was the a great craziest version. thing I we found this out. He was 24 when he did it, and mm. that's that just feels so bizarre to me. Yeah, that that does that 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 doesn't make any sense to me. No, but that's that's a whole nother conversation <laughs> about about accomplishments in your 20s. Yeah. Anyway, uh. but you know what, Ruben? I don't know how well he's doing now, so maybe, you know. I think he kind of disappeared after. He did some sort of song where he just kept apologizing the entire time. Mm. And apparently that's not sexy, so he didn't stick around. Mm. Slow and steady wins the race, folks. Slow and steady. That's that's our trajectory. <laughs> uh, at least that's my trajectory. Um, but, okay, so the... Uh, the one I, I really want to talk about as well was All on the Watchtower, because I think that's, oh, yeah. that's probably the most famous um, cover that became really successful. Uh, yeah, I think I, I would say so. Yeah, so uh, All on the Watchtower, uh, famous Bob Dylan song covered by the great Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that version, I, I don't like to say it's better because I like Bob Dylan so much, but... I would it's, say it's better. It's I think most people would probably say it's better because it's just, it's easier... It's more accessible, I think. Oh, it's definitely more uh, accessible. And it just rocks. And it's just, yeah. it's so, it really just pumped up that song to what, it, it's it, it's almost like Jimi Hendrix knew, like, I could take this and make it into yeah. what it should be. And he just nails it. Right. It's so good. And I think that's a good example of not only him making it his own, he clearly appreciated Bob Dylan. He was a oh. huge fan of Bob Dylan. Oh, of so course. it's, in making it your own, you have to respect the, the original. Yeah. And he definitely showed that. And I feel like by I feel like you respected. To me, it almost seems like you're respect, respecting the original more when you really craft it and make it into your own, rather than trying to copy exactly what totally. the original artist did. Absolutely. So I mean, for me, that's that's one of my one of my personal favorites. Yeah, I, de- I definitely agree. And I think there's a lot of like Dylan songs that have become much bigger because some other group or act has has done it and i i I at least view dylan more as like a great poet Mm -hmm. and a great lyricist as opposed to a singer because he just does not have yeah but see i i liked his voice because it was so unique and interesting to me Uh, maybe not when we saw him (laughs) saw him in Oneonta. we saw him yeah about five years ago right or or, jesus more than five years now yeah We were um, up at college. Is it, what, 2007? Two, 2008? No, no, no. We saw him in 2008. No, was it 2000? It was 2008. Yeah. Jeez. So th- so what are we talking? Eight years ago? Oh, boy. Anyway. <laughs> at the time, he, he he's old now. He was old then. And he sounded like he had been through some things. Yeah. Some, he, he, had, he had seen a lot. And Definitely. Basically, let's just say his voice didn't sound that good. But going into it, I knew that he wasn't going to sound stellar. Right. But it was 15 bucks. So what are you going to do? Pass up a, a, an opportunity to see... Was it really only 15 bucks? Yeah. Wow, it's $15 to bucks. see Bob Dylan. What, are you, what crazy person is going to say no to that? No. And and at that point, too, I was really... I, I was on like this Bob Dylan kick, um, especially my freshman year of college. I was, I was listening to a lot of Bob Dylan. I, I watched the Bob Dylan movie. Oh, nice. Which I didn't understand at all. Uh, to, I think that that's when I have to... Re- oh, is that the... Um, I'll have to revisit I'm, it. I'm here or something I'm not, like that? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not there. I'm not there. I think I own that, and I watched it like once or twice, and I'm just like, what? I, I want to revisit that movie because there's... I feel like maybe I didn't get it the first time around. I didn't. Because I didn't understand why there were so many different people playing Bob Dylan, and they never say the name Bob Dylan once in the entire movie. Oh, really? I never even noticed that. Yeah, because he, it's like different periods of his life, and Kate Blanchett is there. I remember <laughs> I remember she was there. And she, Yeah, I, I don't know. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's definitely one I have to revisit. But, um, but yeah, I mean, Bob Dylan, he had, he's definitely unique. But I, yeah. but I understand why, and a lot of people have covered his songs. But I, for, oh, yeah. For the reason being that he was such a great... It, I, should, I say was like he's dead. He's still alive. <laughs> I mean, he's such a great poet. Watch, yeah. we're gonna release this, and he's oh, gonna, he's please. gonna be dead. No, that would that would, that would be horrifying. Um, but yeah, he was. Yeah, he's such a great poet, and uh, and that's what people gravitated towards. Oh, totally. So it worked out for Jimmy. Yeah, and um, flowing back into the the cover conversation, mm-hmm. one thing that I really love about covers is. 
I, I, I at least, thanks to YouTube, mm-hmm. it's a way that I find out about new acts and new bands. Because yeah. if I, typically I'll have a song that I'm, I really love, and now I'm, I go online, I'm like, all right, let me see, is there an, another band or an act, somebody that can, does a cover of this song? Yeah. So if I can find like a band that does a cover of a tune that I really like, I'm like, oh man, I want to check out the rest of their music. So that's been a, a really like great way for me to find out new acts and new bands. Yeah, no, absolutely. And there's and a lot of bands I've, that have started out by doing covers, mm-hmm. and that's kind of how they bridge their way into doing their own thing as well. Oh, absolutely. Kinda puts them puts them on the map in a sense. Yeah, I mean, I think because it definitely makes um, it makes their music seem a bit more palatable if you can have something to like reference, like oh, they do that cover. Okay. Oh, look, they also th- I like that that original song that they do. That's kind of cool. Right. Yeah, and I just saw uh, too that there's a there's a few bands do it. They're doing a Grateful Dead cover album. Oh, really? Yeah, where they have they have a bunch of different people um, getting involved to I guess do songs. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and I've never been a huge Dead fan. No, neither have I. Uh, but yeah, they you know people do weird stuff like that. Um, I I saw it, and for better or for worse, uh, Brian Wilson does covers. He did an album of Disney covers. In, oh, like Disney songs. Okay. And the sure, I, you know I love Brian Wilson. He's old. He if he wants to do Disney covers. Oh yeah, can, no, he can do, do whatever he do wants. All the Disney covers you want. He did an album, and it, but the the title of the album is called In the Key of Disney. It was oh. Like, oh yeah, it's it's that's it, cheesy. It's, it was really cheesy. He sings like the Bare Necessities, which is a catchy song, yeah. but it's <laughs> it's like really pleasant. I feel like you can you can uh, if you have like young kids, it's like a nice. Nice album to play for them. It's like happy. Yeah, why not? You know, um, but yeah, I mean, it it works. You know, it works for someone like him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting at with that, but I think all in all, I would say that covers are hit or miss. And yeah. There's some really good ones, and I think as I've gotten older, I've grown to appreciate covers, or at least become more interested when I see something online that said oh, so-and-so covered this song, mm-hmm. like a band I like, so, oh, I want to check it out because yeah. it'd be really interesting. And then there are the occasions where I say, wow, this is actually better than the original version, such as in the case of Joe Cocker yeah. or in your, um, along the Watchtower, we could say as well. Oh, definitely. So I, An interesting trend that I've been finding uh, recently relating to covers would be kind of like an inception of covers. Like it's a cover within a cover. Hmm. Uh, and specifically, there's like two... YouTube channels that I keep noticing. One of them is called 10 Second Songs. Mm-hmm. The other one is this guy, Andre Antunes. I hope I didn't butcher that name. I probably did. But 10 Second Songs, it's a really interesting concept. He takes current pop music and does it in various different styles of existing bands. And he, he's, he mainly sings. Mm-hmm. It's this metal dude. He has his own band, I think, called set the charge but he does these amazing covers he'll he'll do like justin bieber adele eminem lincoln park Katy perry and he'll do it in any type of uh any type of musician or band that you could possibly think of he's probably put that into this cover of a song so it'll change up so the song not only changes tempos throughout the the tune it changes genres Mm -hmm. um and it's wild and he has the most insane voice i think i've ever heard because he does he'll do not it's it's hard enough to sing one style of a song but he sings 20 styles uh wow. sometimes and then the, he does it uh for the eminem song he does 40 different styles in that eminem song wow oh wait this was the guy this was the yeah guy we, we okay. yeah i showed it to you it, I was it's gonna nuts. say this all sounds very familiar to me and then the on the other hand there's the uh the guy andre antunes who does a similar kind of concept but with a guitar Okay. So he'll play kind of the same stuff. He has plays Daft Punk, Michael Jackson, Bruno Mars. Uh, I think he does a Coldplay one. Okay. And he does it in ten different guitar styles uh, of n- well-known guitarists. Okay. So that's a wild like. I think these are two different wild styles of having a cover because it right. definitely goes past what you would normally think a cover is, and this definitely falls in with making it their own. Yeah. It's wild. And then there's another guy that I just, if we're sticking on YouTube, that I happen to find a few years back. It's this guy, and I'm definitely going to butcher the name. 
Sunga Jung is his name. He's this he's this Korean kid. He's 19 right now, but he started uh, playing at like nine, so like on YouTube. So he's a machine. He oh he's <laughs> nuts. He is nuts. He does um, uh, finger style. So that's wow. where you're able to play the bass with your thumb and then the rest of the melodies with your, your other fingers. Uh, and he he has a few like amazing songs. He does Sting's Field of Gold, Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror, Beatles Come Together is a sick wow. one. Uh, Bob Marley's No Woman No Cry is another one, and he's like. It's, it's insane. He's like traveling the world. He's just got 3 million subscribers or views or whatever. And and he's 19. Wow. It's ridiculous. Going places. Yeah. That, that's really cool, though. No, that's something that you should also definitely check out. Yeah. Well, uh, wherever we end up posting this, we'll, uh, throw, we'll throw the some, links. Throw some links. Some um, links into the descriptions and stuff. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about cover bands and like tribute bands. We yeah. saw a tribute band years ago. Um, we saw a band called Almost Oh, Pumbaa. yes. That was a great, uh, I mean, ama- amazing. They, they were band. incredible. Yeah. They were way better than the headliner, which I don't even remember who it was. It was Head Automatica. Was it? Oh, my yeah. God. No, it really, it, it was a great show. But the funny thing about tribute bands is that they, that is like they embody the, the band. Like the, the lead singer tried to be Freddie Mercury. Yeah. He might have been a guy from Seattle or something, but he had like the British accent and everything. Yeah, totally. I've seen I've seen good co- like tribute bands and I've seen some really awful tribute. I saw over at Jones Beach they had a Who tribute band. Yeah. And the guy just could not hit the notes. Yeah. It was so awful, especially like uh, like won't get fooled again. Mm-hmm. It's got that big scream, and then like we're all waiting for it, and it's like, oh well, I guess you decided to change the key of the song right there. Oh boy, of <laughs> course. Yeah, see, that's no fun. But and there's got to be hundreds of Beatles tribute. Oh yeah, cover bands. It's been done to death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that that stuff can be fun. It's also kind of cheesy. Yeah, it could be a little cheesy. The other thing that I find somewhat cheesy is just a, a straight up cover band that just does covers of. Like just yeah. that's all they do. They just do covers. I think it's fun when I know a lot of on Halloween, like people do cover shows. Like th- those mm-hmm. are fun. I think that's fun when you do cover yeah. shows. Um, I know there's also that cover band out. Well, technically, I don't know if they're a cover band. They do Velvet Underground songs, but they change the lyrics up, and they're called the Pizza Underground. It's led by, or I don't know if it's led by him or he's in the band, Macaulay Culkin. Oh my God. Yeah, have you heard about this? I think I have, yeah. but like it's just coming. It's it's slowly coming back. Yeah, it's uh, that's hilarious. I've I've heard uh, people throw things at them like they yeah people don't want to see them. Oh really? <laughs> yeah yeah they're they're not very good. Aw, come uh, on Macaulay. Yeah, so you can check them out though they're somewhere they're around they they're they around exist. New York City. Uh, but yeah, cover shows I agree that can be on Halloween it's fun but for the most part they're mm-hmm. kind of silly. It's better yeah. to just listen to the cover or. If you have, sometimes they'll throw out a random cover if you're going to a show. I saw yeah. the band of Montreal, and they closed the show with a cover of Smells Like Teen Spirit. Oh, really? It was great. It was a lot of fun. I remember in uh, in high school, I went to uh, the yeah, it was at the Garden. Uh, friends of mine got tickets to see Green Day. Okay. And I'm not a huge Green Day fan, but it, again, it was 15 bucks. so what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, so we went, and this was right, I think, around the time American Idiot came out. The... The album. That album, yeah. I saw I saw the Green Day show, like the Broadway show. Oh no, it wasn't that. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is this is them live at the Garden. Yeah, uh, this is right after that album came out, and I'm having an all right time. I, I like the some of the earlier stuff that they're playing. I was yeah. never a huge fan of that album. Right. But the show's going on, and all of a sudden they start playing like this this little tune, and like the, I'm listening to the chord progression. I'm just like that that sounds like Shout. Oh yeah. That definitely sounds like Shout. That's weird. And all of a sudden, uh, what's his name? Billy Billy Joe Armstrong. Billy Joe Armstrong just go, stops and goes, "Now wait a minute!" And I'm just like, "Oh my god!" Yes. And then the rest of the show just like kind of that song turned around the rest of the show. The rest of the show was a blast after yeah. that. The, the whole place went nuts. It's fun sometimes to change things up like that, though. It can kind of oh, make totally. Make stuff interesting. Yeah, I've never had any situation like that where it's completely changed. I've been to concerts where they have done covers. And mm-hmm. It's been a lot of fun, but you know, like I said, this smells like Teen Spirit. But usually, it's just kind of yeah, it's a surprise. Yeah, it's just like a thing they'll throw in just for yeah. just for the hell of it. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to say that they continue the rest of the show with covers, but that was like that just got everybody Ch- pumped. Changed the tone. Yeah, it changed the, the tone of the of the show, and everybody was just like everybody got on their feet the rest of the show and were jumping up and down. Well, it's it's really funny to me too 
when you think about when when bands do covers and then all of a sudden every like it's like one of those things where you go to see a band you, not everyone there necessarily is going to know all the words and some people like diehard fans will mm-hmm. you pull out a cover like smells like teen spirit or like shout everyone knows it and everyone yeah. gets into it it's just really funny how certain songs is it just everyone knows oh totally and the, and and of course the bands are going to know that people are going to get right into it yeah it's just really cool I know that so I've seen uh, the band Fits in the Tantrums a few times mm-hmm. and they will periodically do um, Sweet Dreams by the Eurythmics oh yeah and that's that always like the, the crowd goes nuts oh it's a great one. Oh yeah, yeah. That's always fun. Go to a show, go see any band, and hope they play a cover. Yeah, and hope they play it well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, I think we pretty much said it. You know that um, covers again. They're they can be good. They can be bad. They're hit or miss. Yeah. You just gotta find the right ones and gotta you gotta do some exploring. You know, go totally. explore YouTube, explore Spotify. Absolutely. See see new people on YouTube that you've never heard of, and you know just type in the name of a song you like. See who's, yeah. who's covering it. Yeah. And definitely. And uh, wherever we end up posting this, if there's a comment section, let us know what your favorite covers are so we can check it out. Yeah. Um, so is that it? Anything think, else you want to add? I think that's it. I think that's good. Yeah. I think I'm going to have a beer. All right. Sounds good. That works for me. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, take care, and we'll see you next time. All right. Peace. Peace.